What's up, guys? Mic check, mic check. What's up, everybody? Get the stream going here. What's up, guys? Give me one second, just setting up the stream here. Welcome, welcome. Setting up the stream. Give me just one second. Put a one in the chat if you can hear me all right. What's up, Ray Ray? Superwoman, Lisa. Awesome. From New Zealand. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Welcome. Kanga Blue. What's up, Debbie? Sorry, I got my chat to the right, so uh, I don't have my uh, studio set up yet. Um, that will be soon, so just going to wait for a few more to trickle in here. Awesome. What's up, Rhonda? What's up, guys? We're going to talk about the Delphi case and Keegan Klein. What's up, Lisa? I've got about a five second delay from my chat, so I apologize. Um, I'm at a hotel right now, as you can see, or, um, but yeah. Oh, thank you, Rayway. Thank you so much. I said, this is just gonna be, uh, I'll probably go about one hour. Um, like I said, I found a few more things on Keegan Klein and a good theory on uh, what they're doing with him. Sophira, is that pronounced right? Sophira? I hope I pronounced that right. I know we were talking about that in the email. Sophira. All right, just put a one in the chat if the audio's okay, because kind of had an audio problem last time. I apologize. So what I'll do is I'll probably just start with uh, just a short little timeline as everyone kind of trickles in, and then uh, I'll get into the King and Klein and uh, some of the stuff that I dug up here. You got it? Sophira? Okay. Awesome. I love it. What's up, everybody? All right, so I'll start just kind of going in the timeline as everybody kind of comes in, and then uh, we'll get into the, the good stuff. So right here, what I got pulled up is a timeline. So this was the day before Sunday. Oh, thank you, Superwoman. Let's get it, brother. I think he sells and distributes, but also have a feeling there is more than one person involved. Yes, I agree. There is definitely a good possibility there could be two people involved. That They kind of did like a, a pincer move. You got to... You have the guy on the bridge, and then there could have been possibly another guy, you know, down behind the girls, and then they just kind of did a pincer move. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, Superwoman. What's up, Gary? Kaggy Blue from New Jersey. Awesome. From Australia. That's so awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay. Carly Jean, what's up? All right, guys, I'm, I'll, I'll start reading this. And then, uh, like I said, I got the chat to my right, so I'm sorry for keep uh, <laughs> looking to the right. Um, I was hoping to put the chat up on the screen, but this is my second time using OBS. So, you know, we'll just get better each time we go live. So, all right. So anyway, so I'm going to get into this timeline here. So Sunday, February 12th, Liberty German, 14 years old, Abigail Williams, 13 year old, decided to have a sleepover at Liberty's house knowing that they did not have school the next day. There was no school on Monday due to snow due to snow days being built into the school schedule, but the winter being too mild that year for the snow days to get used. The girls do typically sleepover activities and Liberty's older sister Kelsey joins in. Kelsey said that they all had a movie night and ate pizza. All right, so it looks like they had fun the night before. This is, this is just so sad. So Monday, February 13th, the day of the murders. 
The girls sleep in because they had been up late. Libby's father, Derek, makes them pancakes for breakfast. Derek leaves to go take photos for Becky's business. Libby's grandmother, Becky, makes a deal with the girls. She says if the girls help with filing work, she'll give them some spending money, and maybe later on that day, she'll take them out shopping to go spend the money they just earned. The girls happily help with Becky's filing. So here's just a little map of, uh, here's like the Monon Bridge right here and stuff. Um, hey, Karen. So uh, we're just kind of going over a timeline here a bit, and then uh, I'll get into the juicy stuff here uh, in a minute. So, okay, so we go back. All right, so 12 p.m. on February 13th, a suspicious vehicle is parked at the abandoned CPS slash DCS Child Protective Services, I believe, building on the east side of the county road, 300 north next to the Hoosier Heartland Highway. The girls asked Liberty's grandmother, Becky, if they could go to the Monon High Bridge Trail. Becky says yes, but only if they were able to arrange for a ride there and back. The trail is considered to be a hangout for local teens their age. Keep that in mind. The girls were familiar with the Monon High Bridge. And Libby would often visit the trail with her older sister to take photos. Okay, that's fine, Margaret. Um, Libby called and asked her dad, Derek, if he could give them a ride back from the trail since Kelsey was unavailable. Derek agrees to give them a ride back from the trail. That's uh, Kelsey's dad, or Liberty's dad as well. He said he would pick them up once he was done taking photos for Becky's appraisal business. He estimated that he would be done with his photography work in Frankfurt in about two hours. There was no set time for the girls to return to the meeting. The plan was that Derek would call or text them on his drive when he was close to arriving, and they would return to the trail to be picked up. The approximate time they might expect him to be there was between 3 and 3.30 p.m. So you got to take a drink, guys. Okay. So at 1.30, Kelsey picks up the girls to take them to the bridge. Phone records indicate Kelsey's boyfriend calls at 1.38. Remembers already being on the phone with him when she dropped off the girls, meaning the drop-off could have not been any earlier than 1.38. Around this time, Libby calls and asks her dad, Derek, if he could give them a ride back. Derek agrees to give them a ride back from the trail. Derek says he will pick them up once he's done taking photos for Becky's business. There was no set time for the girls to be picked up. Derek said he would call or text them once he's getting close to arriving, and then he would return to the trailhead. Okay, so Kelsey drops off, drops them off at the entrance of the Monon High Bridge Trail that is crossed from the Mears Farm and an unofficial parking area. They were not dropped off at the Freedom Bridge parking area. Kelsey, oops, Kelsey watches the girls walk until they are gone on the trail. Kelsey does not notice anything unusual at the parking area before driving off. So here's the CPS building here. Um, and then this is, I believe, where they parked. And then here's Libby and Abby's direction that they're heading right here. Okay. So Abby and Libby start walking down the trail. And I believe, let me go back here. I don't know if it, let's see if it shows it. Yes, yeah, so there's kind of like two trails. There's this 501 trail right here that you guys can see. And then there's this kind of split that says 505. So just if you ever see uh, 501, this is referring to this trail here that goes along the bridge. Okay. So Abby and Libby start walking down the trail. Abby and Libby reach the beginning of the bridge. At 2.05, Libby German uploads a Snapchat picture of the Monon Bridge. Located right, oh, right here. Okay, is everything going good in the chat? I don't know if my chat froze, if just everybody's all good. Oh, I got you, yep, right. Thank you, Kinga. All right, so now, go down a little bit further at 2.07, Liberty uploads a picture of Abby walking on the bridge to Snapchat. So here she is. Oop. Both of these snaps were posted directly to Libby's story, meaning it was a post that was that was view able by anyone of Libby's added friends on Snapchat. 
Okay, thanks, Ray Ray. I know, I just, I thought maybe the chat had frozen, sorry. <laughs> All right. Oh, I hate seeing this. Now, notice how this guy's walking. I kind of mentioned this in my, um, before I finished the timeline. Now, a lot of people were, the, or there's a few people that are under the assumption that he had like something wrong with his hip. But really, it's just the way that the bridge is set up, that um, that the boards are on level and that there's these really big gaps in between the boards. So, you know, you got to keep your head down and watch where you're going and you got to kind of walk, you know, at an awkward pace. So that's what uh, the detective, uh, when he says, you know, notice the mannerisms and the way he's walking is because he's got to, you know, because each of those boards, are they're not level. Um, and I kind of discussed this in my previous life is the reason why there's got to be such a kind of a discrepancy in the height is because these boards are at different levels. And then how far away back that the girls were, because these girls are, um, let me go up a little bit. Oh yeah. See, it kind of shows where they're at. So here's, here's Libby and Abby and they're pretty much at the end of the bridge. So they're, they're at the end. And as you can see, and they've got these little uh, platforms uh, along this bridge here. Let's stretch out. And he's just kind of coming past this last platform right here. Um, but yeah, so the reason why there's that discrepancy, which is, I believe, 5'4 to 5'10, is because of the distance of the uh, where she took the Snapchat from um, and her angle as opposed to his angle and the board's it's it's kind of hard to get an exact uh, estimate of his height of just because of the distance and everything. So um, there was actually some um, podcasters that did go out. I'm not sure how old the bridge is. That's a good question. It, it looks old and it's very high up. Um, but yeah, so um, I know some podcasters did go out there. Um, there was a guy that was 5'8". And they kind of went from the distance that the girls were and that where he was. And they found that it was a good possibility that he, he's a little more closer to the 5'8 range, which is really just kind of right in the middle of the, I believe, the what, 5'6 to 5'10 gap anyway. But, okay, so let's go on with the story here. Excuse me, let me take some coffee. I'm sorry, my throat's been just dry all day today. Okay. All right, so at an unknown time after the two Snapchats were uploaded, Liberty starts taking a video on her cell phone. Please say the girls most likely talk about stuff girls talk about in the recording. But later, the girls mention a man they noticed behind them on the bridge. Sheriff says it appears the girls initially took pictures for fun, but later, but later became uncomfortable and recorded the video as precaution. In the release video, it is believed that Libby's perspective is from the southeastern side of the bridge, looking backwards towards the northwestern side of the bridge. So it's basically what I just explained, you know, that they were pretty much at the end and that they were looking at um, a bridge guy past this last platform. It has been theorized that the offender pulled a weapon or found a way to make the girls comply with his orders. And it's it's a good possibility. Now, this is why he definitely must have had a weapon or there'd have been two people. Because what... So, this is where they found the bodies. And notice, they had to cross this creek here. And this creek is, um, is pretty deep. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how deep it is. Um, it would have probably at least gone up to their, their thighs. Maybe their waist. Um, easily. Um... And it had been easy for them to try to escape. So he definitely must have had a gun on them, you know, because they could have easily gotten to this river and it's pre or this creek here and they could have tried to, you know, outrun him. So there's that's why there's a good possibility there could have been two people uh, to kind of hold on to both of them as they're crossing this. Hi, Holly. Welcome to welcome to the stream. It's all right. <clears throat> so according According an audio snippet from Libby's, Libby's video recording, at some point the offender says, guys, down the hill. The path the girls and the offender took after leaving the bridge is unknown, 
The arrows on the map are purely an abstract approximation. They are not intended to be taken literally. And then here's the recording. Um, let me know if this plays in your guys' uh, video here. Guys. Guys. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, Put a one in the chat. Guys. So I don't have my headphones in. Yeah, Thank you, Lisa. Uh, good? You guys can hear that okay? Okay, awesome. All right, yeah, like I said, I don't have my headphones in. We, we tried that in the last stream, and the headphones worked great, but the mic didn't. So, you know, <laughs> there's always got to be compromises here. So anyway, um, let's see, what else we got here? So I'll just go a little bit more, and then I'll, uh, okay. Yeah, I'll, so creepy. One, it is louder than your mic. Okay, is my volume okay? Cause I can I can put the mic closer to my mouth uh, if I needed to. What's up, Daniel? What's up, Freya? All right, guys. So uh, I'll, I'll finish this little bit of the timeline, and then uh, I'll get into Keegan here and what I think's going on. So uh, in between the southeastern end of the bridge. And the body disposal location, there's a shallow section of the creek. The shallow section varies between ankle to knee deep and can be waded through. So I guess I guess I was a little bit wrong. I guess it's a little bit shallower, but it still goes up to your knee. Libby's grandmother, Becky, has said, said call records show Derek called Libby at 311, intending to tell them that he was getting close and they should start heading back to be picked up. As a point of reference, Derek remembers he was just starting to drive over the Wilson Bridge when he makes this 311 call. No one answers his call at 311. Derek pulls into the parking area and does not see the girls. Derek calls Liberty's phone, but no one picks up. Derek knows it's not like Liberty to ignore his texts and phone calls, especially when she's expecting him to call. He parks his car and begins walking the trails to search for the girls. So, I believe this is Derek, the green one here. Um, this doesn't have a key. Derek reaches the point where the trails intersect, and he stops a man dressed in a flannel shirt. Now, this is interesting. We'll get to flannel shirt guy in a minute. He stops a man dressed in a flannel shirt who is approaching the intersection coming from the 501 trail. Derek asks the man with the flannel shirt, Did you see, did you happen to see two girls up there? And the man replied, no, I did not, but there's a couple on the bridge. This man with the flannel shirt later becomes a key witness in the case, and he is among the first to give it a witness account to law enforcement. Online discussion outlets have nicknamed him Flannel Shirt Guy. Because Flannel Shirt Guy did not see the girls on the 501 trail, Derek starts walking the other trail, which is the 505. That's why I mentioned the 501 and 505. That leads directly to the creek edge called the 505 trail. So unfortunately, he did not go this way, and he ended up going down this way. So anyway, um, so I'll, I'll just read a little bit more. Um, so Derek does not see the girls on the 505, so he returns back to the trail intersection. Derek calls his mother, Becky, and tells her about not being able to find the girls. Derek asks Becky to try to contact them. Tara, Libby's aunt, was with Becky at the time. Both Becky and Tara started repeatedly calling and texting Libby. They received no response. So anyway, so we, we go along here. Um, they look for the girls, sadly. Um, then they finally end up calling the authorities. Um, and they, they all go do a search party. Uh, they don't find anything that day. And then flannel shirt guy ends up um let's see if i can find flannel shirt guy i was just going to kind of go to him he's the one that supposedly saw the bridge guy and that's where the second uh sketch comes from is from the flannel shirt guy there has been some speculation that it could have been just told someone totally different and that's why um or that's why there could have been two people and this was the second offender and that's why there's uh, two different um, 
sketches. And really at the first sketch, um, let me see, I think they have the sketches down here at the bottom. The first sketch was really just um, based off the video um, and not really uh, an account from a witness. Um, let's see, I think, I just, I just wanted to show the sketches. I mean, I've got them in my thing here. Yeah, here's the sketches. So, you know, we, we knew this sketch right here. Uh, let me, let me take a look at the chat. Everything going good? Oh, thanks, Karen. Yeah, um, it, it's possible, Lisa, but I'm going to get to what I think what's really going on with Keegan um, here in just a second. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so the new sketch was really, or the old sketch, excuse me, is really just um, kind of a, just based off the bridge cut, the video, and this is from the flannel shirt guy. Okay, so now that I got a quite a few in in here, let's go over some of the details that I found today, and uh, what's going on. You know, I think it's kind of weird that you know. I did a video on this case, what um, maybe two weeks, give or take, two weeks ago, when there was nothing going on in this case. You know, it had just kind of been um, nothing really for years, except for um, Chadwell. Um, but technically, it wasn't really falling much better. Oh, I know. Thank you, Mustang. Yeah, I know. I got I got the real mic in here. But yeah, I just it was just what's the coincidence that I um you know I post this case you know on my uh, on my channel you know because this is this case has always been on my mind because it's just been so fascinating and it's just so unique that you know it's gone unsolved for almost five years and yet we have video and audio of the suspect but yet he has not been caught and it's just such odd circumstances you know for this to go unsolved for so long <laughs> yeah oh, awesome i'm glad the, the audio is better um here let me put a little closer here but anyway yeah so i posted this this case about two weeks ago and then what less than a week ago we get the the whole kick and client thing um so it's like this thing just kind of fell into my lap so um all right let me get into the stuff so uh let's see where should we start <clears throat> so they've known about this guy uh keegan since 2017 uh let me see oh there's a lot in the chat let me just check out everything that's going on What's supposed to guy flannel shirt on shirt no actually flannel shirt guy so just uh not so you're not confused flannel shirt guy is actually a guy that owned a he lived real but lived near lived close to um the bridge um so the flannel shirt guy is actually just a witness he's he's the one that supposedly saw a bridge guy so not to be confused with the suspect have you got the words from the bridge guy audio Are you talking about guys down the hill, TM? If I do, I just played that just a minute ago. Um, I'll, I'll get back into that maybe here in a minute. Oh, thanks, you Holly. All right, so let's get into the stuff today. So Keegan, so I've known about this guy since 2017. As a matter of fact, so here, I'm going to read this document right here. The Indiana State Police are expected to release more information next week on Keegan Klein. A man who's connected to the social media account, authorities say they found while investigating the 2017 murders of 13-year-old Abby and Libby in Delphi, Indiana. News 8 continues to follow the major developments surrounding the Delphi murders. Friday, that coverage took us to Peru, Indiana, where Klein is in jail. News 8, Demi Johnson first reported about Klein earlier this week when she uncovered the documents that connected Klein to the social media account Anthony Schatz used to solicit young girls. 
The Miami County prosecutor told News 8 in a statement he was not able to talk about the investigation, but said police were expected to release more information early next week. And that's this week. And I'll tell you why um, in just a second. Um, here, let me get back into that. Yeah, let me get, let me go read this. Okay, so even though charges have been filed in the matter of state of Indiana versus Keegan Anthony Klein, this is still an ongoing investigation, and the Miami County Prosecutor's Office is unable to comment or give interviews at this time. It is my understanding that Indiana State Police will be issuing a press conference or press release with more information early next week. This matter is set for a pre-trial conference in Miami Circuit Court via Zoom at 8.15 a.m. on December 16th, 2021. I'll read that in just a second. Oh, thank you, High Backbone. Thank you so much. That is so awesome. Thank you. I'm um, sorry. Let me finish this real quick. Um, it is expected at that time a trial date will be scheduled. Anyone who has had contact or any information regarding the social media account Anthony Schatz, please direct that information to the Indiana State Police. Thank you so much for that super chat, High Backbone. That is so awesome. Thank you. So this is what I think is going on. They are using Klein. They could possibly use it be Klein as bait to be getting the big fish. They've got his trial, I think December 16th, I believe is a Thursday this week. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. At 8.15. And then we know that the Indiana Police Department is going to do release even more information. So I think that there's something in this trial that's going to come out that the Indiana Police Department, our, I'll just say ISP, is needs to kind of get ahead of before it comes out in trial. And so that's why they're going to release some new information. And I think it's a good possibility that he has been in contact with the bridge guy, you know. So let me, uh, and now uh, this is his uncle here. I'll go back to him in just a second. Um, so, okay, so this is, um, let me read this. Okay, this is part of this whole redacted documents that uh, has come up recently. So on February 25th, which was, Basically, uh, what, two, exactly two weeks after the girls were murdered, at approximately 12.30 p.m., the search warrant was executed on the residence by ISP, Indiana State Police Department, FBI, and the Peru Police Department, Peru, Indiana. Blank, which is Tony Klein, and his son, Keegan Anthony Klein, were located in the residence. So he was in Indiana on February 25th, 2017. At approximately 12.35 p.m. Eastern Time, Tony was interviewed by ISP Sergeant um, Kunstek and FBI Space Agent Will Mann. Excuse me. Tony, sorry. Tony was read his rights and agreed to speak with investigators. Tony confirmed that they had Comcast as their internet provider and it was secured network. Tony told investigators that Keegan did use Instagram and Snapchat. After Keegan's interview, he was polygraphed at the Peru State Police post by Sergeant Matthew Collins. Keegan and Sergeant Collins spoke about this incident and case, which would be the Delphi case, so they have it redacted, Keegan again admitted to creating the fake Anthony. So like I said, he admitted to making this account and they knew about it in 2017, but yet they, they come out saying, well, we need, you know, to figure out who this guy is, but yet they've, they've known all along. Um, so like I said, they need our help. And I think what it is, well, let me finish this and I'll get into my theory. So Keegan told Collins, the girls ranged from 15 to 17, and he knew their ages because they told they told him how old they were. Keegan stated he received approximately 100 pictures from young girls. Keegan described pictures, and I can't even talk about that stuff. 
not good pictures. Kagan also advised he received approximately 20 videos of young girls, and I should cross that out. Keegan stated he would to the pictures and videos they sent him. He also communicated this to the girls who were sending the pictures and videos. Keegan's polygraph questions were based on case, the Delphi case. Keegan's polygraph was concluded at approximately 7.30 and he was transported back to his residence. This happened in 2017, guys. So there's something that they know. And he's, he's, Keegan's the key to this. If he's not the bridge guy and his dad's not, if his, him and his dad are not the bridge guy, they are the key to unlocking who is. And I think that they could be, because they knew what he was doing in 2017, but they didn't arrest him until 2020. He was doing all this bad stuff. And they let him go. And now they didn't arrest him until 2020. So could it be that they're going to hold all this over him and they're going to try to hold as much charges as they can? And they'll say, hey, you know what? If you guys, if you give up Bridge Guy, we'll cut this off your charges. This could be one theory. You know. Sorry, I'm just reading the chat just a minute here because you guys have kind of been talking. Yeah, I yeah, I agree, Karen. Um sorry guys, I'm just reading your chat here a little bit. I kind of missed a few things as I was going here. So yeah, so I, I think, you know, if it ain't him or his dad that they're, you know, he's going to lead to the bridge guy here. Um, so let's see what else I got in my notes here. So yeah, this is just uh, talking about um, how they've known since 2017 and then here they let him go. And I think that they were just kind of using him as bait it almost seems like for this entire time and then it just seems like he just kept messing up and they just finally decided hey you know what we're gonna we're gonna take him in and then you know we got to get ahead of this so we need to put you know what we've known out and so here comes that december 8th you know from isp about this account and that, that there's a good possibility that bridge guy was Either, you know, maybe he was sharing this stuff to Bridge Guy, or Bridge Guy's a link to this guy somehow. Um, Greeno, yeah, I know Greeno, Ray Ray, I'm not sure if you're talking to me, but yeah, Greeno, yeah, he's, yeah, he's really good. He's the ones that, uh, he's one of the people that went out there and did the, uh, Hyde experiment, which is really gay. He's been on this case for a long time. I believe Greeno's been, uh lives in indiana correct me if i'm wrong but yeah really great guy really great guy excuse me so anyway um so yeah this is i'm pretty sure in my earlier uh live stream i found this guy this guy's name is brian joseph klein i'm still trying to figure out i like i said i'm more sure than not that he is related to the other clients almost like he's uncle to anthony um brian joseph klein 45 will serve six years in the indiana correction department of correction on a level four felony charge of child in the cast circuit count judge burns said two of these years may be served through and blah 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 so yeah just doing some terrible stuff to young girls uh he was let's see yeah, he got um, busted in 2016. I forget the exact date. So, um, you know, it seems like some of this stuff's run in the family. Um, I looked up the mother. Who is FSG? FSG stands for flannel shirt guy, Karen. If that's what you're asking. Flannel shirt guy. Uh... Yeah, flannel shirt guy. He... 
I think he owns like a farm or something nearby to the bridge um, in Deer Creek. Um, I'd have to go back to that and look at it. But yeah. So he's he's the one that kind of helped uh, come up with the... Because um, apparently bridge guy after the murders he came back oh thank you so much for the two dollar donation first time i've caught you live yay thank you doohickey thank you so much thank you so much guys you guys are amazing um yeah like i said it's just a short little stream um you know i'm not i'm not in my studio i'm just sitting here in a in a super eight hotel right now um i'm just glad the uh the stream's going okay um, like I said, there's a little bit of lag on the chat, so I apologize. And then, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get this better. You know, we'll, we'll have the chat up on the screen. Um, that way I don't have to keep turning my head. You guys have to look at my ears and stuff. So, but anyway. So, yeah, so I found this guy. And then, like I said, this Keegan is, um, some big stuff's going to happen. I, I'm not going to release this guy's name yet because i got to still find some more information on him. But I'll, I'll tell you what I did find. Um, I found this guy. I found Libby's post. Yeah, my ears. See, my ears. <laughs> oh, Emo Jim. Thank you. Hey, dude. Glad to see you live for the first time. I love your channel and your little kitty. So cute. Great job. Thank you, Emo Jim. Yeah, my kitty, uh, fortunately, cannot come with me. I'm glad I didn't take him. I miss him so much, but um, he would have. That trip was rough. Um, I I will go back and get him during the uh, the summertime. Baby beef, that's his name. Baby beef. <laughs> All right. So anyway, this guy here. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna release his name right now because you know we don't. I don't know a whole lot of information. I don't want to be ruining someone's life. But anyway, this guy here did um he went on liberty german's page and then on his on their facebook page yeah facebook page liked all these photos like almost all of them and then like shared them like five different times and then posted his name into it and it was just real bizarre i i just i don't know you know like could have been you know trophies i you know i don't know you know like i said there's this is kind of early, but it the, the connection is this guy lives in um, Kokomo, Indiana. So it was just weird, you know. I was just kind of going through Liberty German's page. Come across this guy that's like liked all of their photos, shared them a bunch of times. And yeah, just, just kind of weird. But like I said, you know, who, who knows? Maybe he was trying to help. That's why I don't want to release the name or anything. Um, I don't know if you guys know the BT take. BTK killer, but he looks a lot like uh, Dennis Rader for some reason. Do you guys know Dennis Rader? He looks just like him. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of creepy. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, and then like I said, I'm pretty sure this guy's his uncle. Um, you know, like I said, this guy's from. Uh, not Galveston. Um, oh, it just said, where did this guy come from? Logansport. Yeah, so Logansport's real close. Um, so I'm pretty sure he's got to be part of the family somehow. So, yeah. So, anyway, I think what's going to happen. So, we've got the court thing coming. The pretrial for Keegan this week, December 16th at 8.45 Zoom meeting. And I think that either, you know, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, we will most likely get the next piece of the information, the next piece of this puzzle. Um, what this is talking about here real quick. Sorry, I got to take a sip here, guys. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, this case is just kind of broken open, Emo. Um, all of a sudden, they released a, a, this whole account that's attached to this Keegan Klein guy. They've known about him since 2017. And I think there's a reason why 
they had didn't arrest him until 2020. But it is he, he there is some weird stuff though from Kagan himself though. You know, there, there still could be a possibility he's bridge guy. Um I'm leaning after this stuff, I'm kind of leaning more towards no, but here's his dad. You know, it's kind of creepy though. You know, his dad, his nose. I mean, they, they kind of match up. I need to get this a little bit bigger. But it's kind of creepy how his dad's nose um, really matches up to this one here. Anna Marie, hey there, just got back from a trial in Utah. Okay, well, I'm in Utah. Awesome. Yep, I'm back safe. I'm in a hotel right now. Yeah, I know. His dad, I know, it is kind of creepy. His dad does look like Bridge Guy. It really does. Um, you know, he put that facial uh, facial hair right there. Um, yeah. I know, Lisa, doesn't he? That one guy, BTK. Yeah, I know. Like I said, my chat's a little behind, so I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, like I said, this this was just so interesting to go back to Keegan, though. That here he is. Um, and I don't know how many people caught my stream earlier. But it's so odd that he posted this. Keegan did. Now, this is what's weird. He posted this on February 13th. 2017 the day of the murders he said that on february 12th he was a tables games dealer but i went over this morning to be able to be a tables game dealer in vegas you've got to go to like you know some kind of class kind of schooling for you know eight to twelve weeks at least um and you got to pass background checks you got to pass a drug test we know that keegan has not been shy about how he likes to talk about using marijuana and stuff and i believe you know i don't think this guy could have passed all this kind of stuff and then what's odd and like i said i don't know a whole lot about facebook you know um but so he pasted, posted this on february 13th but then somehow when you go over the clock it says he added it on may 13th i think it's like may may something 2020 so why is it that he felt like he needed to repost this again out of all of the days? It just it's, it's kind of bizarre. Emo oh um yeah I I moved from Ohio back to Utah. This is where I was born and raised um and so yeah, I just got back here about a few days ago and uh yeah. Uh, what's up, Christy? What's up, Karen? Uh, Christopher Life. I uh, hope they get that guy. So the Star Life. How sad. Yeah. Yeah, Margaret. Yeah, it could be. It, it's just so strange. Like I said, I after this new information that came through, I'm leaning more towards the theory that they're using Keegan, kind of like bait to get the big fish. But there, there still could be possibilities that you know. He could be involved more directly. It's just this is too odd to not uh, discount. So yeah, here's this. Um, so here's his dad. Um, well, here's his dad with Stevo, of course. <laughs> um, here's interesting. So I don't know if I talked about the height. Uh, we talked about that earlier today. So the height apparently of Keegan is six one, but this is according to the records um at the jail, I believe. I could be wrong. But I was telling people earlier in the chat today that you know you know, when we get our driver's license, we just go to the DMV or BMV, I guess depending on where you're from. I, I learned that when I went out to Ohio. But, you know, when you go in to get your license, they just ask you, hey, how tall are you? And you or, you know, you just write it down. And so when you get booked, from what I heard, it's kind of like the same thing. They're just like, all right, how tall are you? So he, he could have said, hey, I'm 6'1", when really, you know, he's like 5'10", 5'11". Um, and we know this guy is kind of like a pathological liar. So it'd be really easy for him to, you know, try to say he's taller than he really is. 
Sorry, guys. I take a sip of my drink here. <clears throat> Klein had liked Liberty's photo on social media. Oh, thank you, Ray. Okay. Um, uh, I heard something about that. I'll have to look into that. Thank you, um, Ray. Ray. Interesting. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Um, yeah, I, I know I've heard multiple reports that the, 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 he claims he's six one. Um, yeah, five, eight to five, nine. Yeah. Thank you, Christy. Yeah. So Greeno went out there. They, they had like a stick, they had an advanced camera. They went out to the bridge, um, some podcasters and YouTubers, and they, they tried to get a more accurate, um, height of the bridge guy. And as I was going to explain earlier in my chat, you know, there's always going to be a discrepancy a little bit because you've got the angle from the camera. You got the bridge that each each plank is kind of different height. So there's going to be there's always going to have to be kind of a little bit of, you know, a variation. But yeah, anyway, so and then so this is a picture of him and his dad. Um, I believe this is the Hoover Dam. Uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, here's him and his dad. I'm not sure who these two are. Yeah, I think something's going to break soon, uh, White Light Moon. I really do. There's just another one of his dad. Uh, here's, here's Keegan's uh, YouTube page. Um, I kind of went over this earlier today. Uh, it's just got two videos. One's like kind of like a music video with fancy cars in it. Um, and it's got uh, rap and it's a hip hop song. And then this other one is just uh, New York City in 24 hours. It's you know it's just kind of a montage of pictures. Um, because you know I I did want to try to do I've been trying to look up for um some vocals to match you know. But, you know, anything that I've found so far that supposedly uh, Keegan is, uh, at least from the songs, are all, you know, songs are all been digitally, you know, enhanced and stuff. So there's no way to really get it accurate. You know, we need to get him, you know, talking, you know, just in a regular video or something to be able to match his voice to the bridge guy. Pauline says justice is finally coming in frustration. These two young girls. Yeah. Yeah. What are the odds that this is all coming out? And here we're coming up on the fifth year anniversary of this uh, tragedy. I mean, it would be so great for it to, you know, for something to break. And I, I really think something big's going to happen. I really do. Um, Yeah, Peru. I know. When you think Peru, I know. Peru is a town in, in Indiana. It's real close to Delphi and Galveston. They're they're all in there together. I don't in, know India that good. Indiana, excuse me. But yeah, Peru is in Indiana. Small town. So, um, yeah, and then this is what's interesting. So this is um this is why I think that he's going to lead to, if he's not, if Keegan's not the bridge guy, this is why I think this could lead to him. So on his Apple iPhone 3G, which was named Kiggy, um, the user approximately at May 23rd, 2015, Keegan would have been 20 years old at the time. Device was scared with pin code. There was numerous usernames and email address located on the phone. So there are no chat conversations from Skype or Kick Messenger recovered from this device that had evidentiary value. Multiple still images depicting females. Yeah, the ages of the females were indeterminate. Multiple users saved screen captures of conversations were found. In one screen capture, the sender specifically identified the receiver as Keegan. In one screen capture, the sender identified the receiver as Keegan. So it looks like they had somebody, they've already got somebody already, you know, who sadly Keegan 
used um, and um, has identified Klein. <clears throat> so the user saved over 200 still images to this device, which contained location data that was embedded into the file. Approximately 27 of the still images depicted of females who appeared to be at least 14 years of age or older. Some of these images depict new female, yes, some of the 27 images were geolocated in Indiana cities including Bunker Hill, Galveston, Indianapolis, Kokomo, Monterey, and Royal Center. This is huge. So basically, not only was, you know, he contacting girls that were from other states or from across the country, he was talking to girls in his own backyard, you know, in these cities close to him. Which means that you know, there was a lot of these girls from these cities that he had. And could he have been maybe trading them to, let's say, if he wasn't bridge guy, could he have been trading them to bridge guy or somebody associated with bridge guy? Like I said, there, there's got to be a reason why, if he's not bridge guy, that they've had known about this since 2017, done polygraph tests on him, and they must believe that he you know holds the keys and knows is the missing link to this thank you christy thank you so much is there any audio of the father yeah i'm i'm trying to find i'm digging guys i am really digging on the audio um if i can i will you know i will definitely post if i do um you know, we we got to be careful because technically the father has not done anything. So, you know, we have to kind of be tread lightly on certain things. Um, but, yeah, it would be nice to hear be nice to hear their voice, especially Keegan's when, you know, it's not auto tuned. Um, to see if any of these voices match up to bridge guy. But I, I definitely think there's could be a big possibility. It could be two people. Um there that day on February 13th. You don't think the dad? Yeah. Sorry guys, like I said, I, I apologize for you guys having to stare at my ears. I'm just looking at the chat. Like I said, I'm on a the next time I go live, I'm hoping I'll, I'll be able to have the chat up here so, you know, I can actually keep looking. I can look at you guys, look at the chat, and yeah, you guys don't have to stare at my ears. So anyway, I think that's just about all I had um, tonight. Let's see. Um, the timeline events. A lot of the stuff I went on the earlier this morning. So there's just more pictures of him and his dad. I said his dad's nose. They both kind of got the same nose, which is interesting. Um, just odd. They got another picture with Steve O here. And then you know his his weight's definitely kind of fluctuated. And from what I noticed, I've seen. I don't have the one, but there's one from 2017, where you know it does kind of look like he's kind of been more of his more slimmer than what he'd looked like in uh, 2020 for sure. Um, this is his dad at the uh, Kokomo factory um, where they build motor parts. <laughs> thank you, Karen. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, thank you guys. Yeah, like I said. Um, oh, yeah, here's that screenshot. So... I don't know, um, I said, I, I don't know Facebook that much, but ha is it possible? Like I said, so you guys seen the screenshot a little bit earlier. I had where this said February 13th. So it looks like he posted on February 13th about this February 12th date. And then he modified it again on May 13th, 2020. So, um, like I said, I, I've never modified like that stuff on Facebook like that, but I don't know. You guys have to tell me in the chat. Is it, is it possible to just kind of remodify that? And that's why, because, you know, you guys seen mine. It said February 13th right here. 
which is just kind of bizarre. Um, and yeah, here's the requirements to become a, a, a blackjack dealer or a games dealer. You know, you got to pass an audition, high school, no felonies, no misdemeanors. And let's see. Okay, so no misdemeanors, but yet here's the police looking at him. What, they rated him on 25th? So this guy is supposedly believed that he's going to be working at a casino, and yet he's rated on the 25th? I, yeah, I, I don't think so. You can edit. Oh, thank you, Margaret. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. <laughs> When did he get locked up? Is that what you're asking, Christy? He got locked up in 2020. Um, the date, uh, I can't remember the exact date, but 2020. But they've known about him since 2017. 2017, right after the girls got murdered. I mean, what's all these coincidences? You know, there's just way too many. You've got him posting this stuff on the day that they're murdered. Um, he lives Delph. I mean, all these uh, Kokomo, Indiana, is real close to Delphi. It's like thirty minutes away. Um, you got that uncle I showed you guys. Um, he lived in Logansport, which is just right there in Indiana. So I could say one of these guys, if it's not the father and son, one of these guys are going to lead to it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just seeing if I left anything out. Um, so yeah, so before I go, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for joining the stream. Um, you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for the super chats. You guys are so awesome. Um, and yeah, so I was thinking that we'll uh, we'll be doing this more often once I get my studio. Um, I got a place I'm looking at tomorrow, so hopefully um, I'll have a new home tomorrow and I won't be stuck in a hotel, <laughs> and I'll be able to go live a lot better and i can get better at using this obs system uh on better internet hopefully and um yeah sorry my mouth just keeps getting dry and i guess i get excited when i talk to you guys <clears throat> thank you Annette. thank you so much oh, i'm sorry but i don't care for just <laughs> oh don't make me laugh don't make me laugh emo Hey, you know, I, I support everybody, you know, everybody on YouTube, you know, I understand he's, he's a different guy. Um, but thank you so much. That means a lot guys. Um, yeah, flannel shirt guy has been, um, question. Yeah. He's, he's, he was just a witness. Thank you, Karen. Thank you guys so much. Um, like I said, we'll be, uh, I don't know what's going to go on tomorrow. Cause I'll probably, if I'm moving, I, I'm probably not going to have time to go live. But if not, I'll, I'll make up for it, definitely, for sure. Um, I'll get a video going, or we'll go live. And then, oh, I know what I was going to say, is that, you know, um, I get better at this. We'll be doing, like, phone calls and stuff, so you guys can get more involved. That's definitely what I want to make sure we do, is get you guys, you know, I'm here for you guys. That's what's most important to me, is this channel and you guys. So, thank you guys so much. I uh, I love you all. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's stream. And I hope you guys had a great weekend. And we will see you guys next.